Hi everybody. So I want to talk about something that I've wanted to talk about for a really long time just because I've been a lifelong knife nut. I used to participate way back in the day with the original Blade forums in 2001 and since then I've owned a ton of knives. This is a collection of my most used and easily accessible knives. The other stuff, some of my more special knives, are displayed rather than used. Another reason that I selected these is because these types of knives will drive home a point. We'll get to why a box cutter is here. But let's go ahead and take a look at what I've got here. So one of the first knives that I ever owned was a K-Bar. This K-Bar. As you can see, the sheath used to be painted. Time has really, really worn a lot of it down. There's a lot of scuff marks. And it originally came with a leather sheath. However, it did get worn out one rainy day. So I opted to go ahead and replace it with one of these. As you can see, I've used this quite a bit. Uh, I did make my own changes to the knife itself. I've uh, removed this part right here just so that I could get a better grip on the back part. I've also thinned out the handle in a specific place right at the top just so that I could have a little bit more control. Now I did seal this end off here too so that uh, water and other debris couldn't get in the little gap in between the guard, the handle, and the blade. The reason that I actually stopped carrying this is because if you carry this on your hip or anywhere really on your gear for any extended period of time, it's going to start wearing at you. You're going to start to feel it rub against your thigh. It's going to get in the way. You're going to have to flop it around so that, you know, when you sit down, it's not going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to ride up and the handle, it tends to dig in your side. It was more of a comfort issue to remove it from my gear because I did opt for something else. The next knife that I opted to go for was this really cheap Smith & Wesson HRT boot knife. Uh, I didn't really use it much. It still got a factory edge to it. I actually gifted it to my dad so that he could use it. And it's obvious that he just kept it near his, uh, his other personal belongings. I mean, it just kind of sat there. I did try to take this out a, a, a few times. However, at the time, I was still a, a knife snob. You know, I didn't quite understand what I was doing. So I believe that the best knives that you can get should be custom. They should be these $300, $400, $500 monsters. And after that, I went ahead and bought a uh, Neil Blackwood henchman, the original henchman. Yes, I did sell it quite a while ago. I know. I was on the wait list for it, and I think I sold it for $50 more than I had originally paid for it to a well-known knife flipper. Then he ended up tripling the price, essentially. I mean, yes, true, it is my loss. It's one of those live and learn situations. So anyway, I moved on from that, and I got this SOG. This SOG double-edged dagger. It's a little boot knife again because it's easy to carry. It's very lightweight. However, one thing that I didn't like about it was the fact that, you know, at the time I didn't really like anything that didn't have a good substantial guard. And that was a, a little bit of a deal breaker for me at the time. I, I didn't really know what was going on, but what was even more inconvenient was the type of sheath. It was just set up to be a boot knife. So if you have this writing on your belt, it's going to be pretty high up there. You know, because it, it, it is intended to be a boot knife and it would just pop off and it, w it wasn't too secure for me. So it kind of got relegated to the knife drawer, so to speak, for a while. So I did mention that I would buy customs. Here is a custom knife that I had never really used because I thought that it was too nice to take out into the field. This was made by a lady... Her name was Kathleen Tomey. I don't think she makes knives anymore, and I don't know if she's actually around anymore. It's got some nice file work here on the, uh, on the spine of the blade, and it was just too nice for me to use out in the field, so it kind of kicked around in my uh, display cabinet for quite a bit. Obviously, this was something that a young private had no business really buying with the intent to use out in the field. But, you know, sometimes you just collect to collect, and 
I really doubt that I would actually take this out just because of what it means to me now. Now, we get into the knives that I've actually used out in the field. This right here is a Spyderco Kumo. I really like the profile of this knife. It rode behind my mag pouches actually on my equipment. That way I could pull it out. It's nice, it's slim. That handle has no real thickness to it. So it's very, very uh, easy to place on your equipment. And it's not gonna take a whole lot of space. It's going to do exactly what it needs to do. And most of the time that was opening an MRE. And that's if I didn't have a folding knife as well. They don't make these anymore. I highly doubt that I would actually stick that on my equipment now. That's more of a collector deal. This knife right here is one of my older ones. One of the first ones I ever bought when I was into knives. And it's a Daryl Ralph design. It's an Arclight uh, Cuda. And this was made by Camillus back in the day. Now it's really, really slim. It would ride really, really well behind a mag or something. This was a uh, neck knife. It's small enough to do most uh, jobs that you need to do as far as cutting, but there's no guard here. And at the time, I really, really wanted something with a guard. You can see that as I got older and, uh, you know, used knives for more utility rather than some kind of misguided what if, you know, I were attacked, a guard didn't mean so much to me. See? The next knife that I do want to talk about here is, this is a Buck 245. It is a, uh, I believe it was called the Matt Would Go Fixed Blade. It commemorates the life and service of Matt Leathers. He was a Navy SEAL that passed away when uh, he suffered a training accident. And it's a good gesture by a good American company for a great American one thing that I really like about this knife is that it is carbon steel. It's 5160, so you can use it for fire starting and things like that. You can see that I've taken away a lot of the uh, blade coating here because it started to rust underneath and then it actually started to bubble out. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of see the pitting that happened. Uh, probably not. But I wanted to be, make sure that I got all of it off. That way the knife wouldn't degrade. I like how you can remove the scales of this knife and the shape of the handle. It really helps secure the knife in your hand, these little ridges, these bumps, um, and these finger grooves so that you have a good purchase on it when you're actually doing a lot of work. You don't want your hand sliding around. Again, it doesn't have uh, you know a giant guard here so that it can prevent your hand from slipping up. That comes from you knowing how to work with a knife, work around a knife, you know, how to properly hold it rather than stab it willy-nilly into things. You know, for me, it was it was a make or break kind of issue with a knife. And the more experienced I got, the, the more it didn't really matter to me. This one I still currently use whenever I go out walking in the woods because it's extremely useful. It's, it's very useful. But it's not something that I use in the city because city stuff requires something different. So originally, here comes more custom stuff. This is an original Front Sight Knives Hack, H-A-K, hideaway knife. It's made out of S30V. Um, this was when they had the original runs and you had to wait for everything to be cut out. And I believe Strider made one right after this version. It, it's not something that I would actually carry around because when, when it comes to self-defense, yes, knives can be a, a weapon, but it will be a last ditch weapon. And at this point, I've had it for so long. It's been nearly 20 years. If I had to lose it to an evidence locker, this is important. If you use something in self-defense and you're in one of these wonky areas to live in, they're probably going to take it. If it's cool enough, you're probably never going to see it again. I mean, it really depends. So I have this as one of my knives that has sentimental value. It's been with me to uh, different places in the world, and I would really hate for it to get lost in any way or for me to break it at this point. It's become a collector's item for me. That leads me to the last three knives that I have out here uh, that are going to touch on some important things. So I did say, if you use a knife, it's most likely going to be taken, held, and you may or may not get it back. So what I did one day, uh, and this had to be about five months ago or so, you know, you can just hop onto Amazon 
you can pick up one of these and it costs about $14. Now it's going to do exactly what you need to do. So it's basically a get the hell away from me kind of uh, uh, pokey stick. It's not going to be used for any kind of cutting. Maybe you can use it for fine detail cutting and you're like this. You know, but then at that point, you might as well just use an actual exacto uh, knife. But this is pretty close to it, and it does have this little ring here, so it keeps it securely in your hand. They are cheap enough that if you use it or lose it or have it taken away from you, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to replace. You're not going to be fretting over losing this knife. It's not going to be something that's going to keep you up at night. You're not going to have any regrets. But if we're going to be 100% real about it, the AK-47 of the knife world is something like this. It doesn't have a brand. It's, it's not important. It's literally 99 cents at Walmart. You can use it for food prep. You can use it for anything. It, it, it's, it's 99 cents. It's made in China. It's sharp. You can go ahead and use it for fruit. It's very utilitarian. The sheath, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say about the sheath? It, it, it's just holding the blade and making sure that you're not cut by it, right? So you can stash this anywhere. Check with your no local knife laws. You know, there are lots of weird places where it's okay to do one thing, but not okay to do another. For the most part, you know, at least you have something on you. If you were to go to a city that's unfamiliar for you and you know that you can carry around a knife, are you going to take your Wonder Weapon dagger that you paid three, four, five hundred dollars for, you might have police that might decide to keep it for themselves, especially if you're in a third world country. There, you're always going to be able to find a department store, doesn't matter where you are, and they will always have a knife because, you know, people have to open fruit, they have to cut meat, they have to live. And you're guaranteed to always find one of these. If you're ultra, ultra, ultra cheap and you have nothing like a Walmart around you, find a thrift store, secondhand store, any kind of flea market type deal, pick up a 50 cent knife from there, you'll be set. Now, when it comes to raw utility and blades, there's something that you can't neglect. If you're purely all about utility, there's nothing wrong with one of these. I mean, it's literally a u-line box cutter i'm not telling you to buy this specific one any box cutter will do you know you can replace the blade with your standard box cutter blades don't think that these don't have an impact either i mean one of these was used in one of the worst events in united states history in 2001 i don't really need to elaborate on that because i think most of us are going to understand and know what event I'm talking about. This can do significant damage to somebody. If you're really concerned about self-defense and you're in an area where having a straight up knife like this is going to draw some real heat, you can probably get away with one of these and explain this away as a tradesman rather than one of these. Okay, this, this looks like it it has a specific purpose. You can call it utility all you want, but if you were to put it in front of grandma and grandpa and ask them what's more threatening, this or this, you can always say that you're going to work with one of these. What are you going to tell them with one of these? You know? So I hope I touched on a few points that can get you thinking about your own situation, whether you live in a rural area or an urban area, your needs are going to change. Uh, your preferences are going to change according to your experiences, according to what you do. You know, I started with one of these. Look at where I ended up. There's a big difference between the two. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other. It depends what for. Truth be told, I don't even really use this as much as my other stuff, like my folding knives, because, I mean, it just... It's just not really a thing for me. If I needed something for self-defense, I have other stuff for self-defense. Uh, better things for self-defense than getting up close with a small bladed knife because each knife is a very up close and personal type of weapon. I'm not saying that you have to select a type of knife or that one knife is better than the other. You know, it's America. Knock yourself out, buy what you want. I have no problems with collecting because that's all that this is for me at this point. A lot of it is just adding to the collection. 
there's really no reason for me to say I'm going to use XYZ in self-defense. If I had to, it's a last ditch effort. It's pretty bad. Um, and at that point, I'm probably just going to select whatever pocket knife I'm carrying on hand. So that is my rundown of knives, knife selection, and uh, thinking about where you are and what you do. And and I hope this helps you understand where I'm coming from because we all make decisions based on our experiences. So I hope this video helps you out. Maybe you'll understand why I'm packing what I'm packing if I show you what I'm going to be doing out in the woods or the desert or walking around the city. Just remember it's all going to depend on what you do individually, okay? So if you have any comments, concerns, questions, leave them down below. I read them all. I try to respond to them all as well. So until the next video, be good. Stay safe and have a good one.